and welcome to St. Peter and All Saints Episcopal Church in Kansas City. Deacon Donna and I and the whole congregation are happy to worship with you today. A bulletin for this service can be found through a link in the description section of the YouTube video that you might have just clicked on or in an email from the church. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before us, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. The Paul and Silas who came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony, and as we were going to a place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. When her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful as for Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them beaten with the rods. And after they had given a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following his instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the Foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he was he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At that same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. 
He brought them into the house and set food before them. And he said he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Our designated psalm is Psalm 97. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are around about him. Righteousness and justice are foundations of his throne. A fire goes up before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world and the earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all his people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous and give thanks to his holy name. Our second reading is from the Revelation of John, chapter 22. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon, my reward is with me, to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that, may have, so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. Let everyone who hears say, Come. Let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, 
that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that also those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Columbine, Virginia Tech, Sandy Hook, Parkland, and now Uvalde are names seared into our collective consciousness. Last Tuesday, at least 19 students and two teachers were killed in an attack by a lone gunman at an elementary school in the small town of Uvalde, Texas. We've heard public officials and others describe the events as horrific, tragic, senseless. How do we, as followers of Jesus, respond in the face of adversity? In today's gospel, we are observers at the Last Supper. Jesus has been on his hands and knees washing the disciples' feet. Then he sends his betrayer, Judas Iscariot, out into the night. He tells the remaining disciples that he will be leaving them and returning to the Father. He promises that he will not leave them as orphans, but will ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to teach them all things and remind them of everything he has said to them. The conversation between Jesus and the disciples concludes, but before they leave the upper room to cross the Kidron Valley to the garden where Jesus will be arrested, Jesus looks toward heaven and turns to the Father one on one in prayer with the disciples as witnesses. Jesus prays to the Father for himself and not only on behalf of these, meaning the disciples who have been with him during his earthly life, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. We are in this last group. We have come to believe, to trust in Jesus through the witness of scripture, of sacraments, and of generations of faithful men and women. Jesus is praying for us. Jesus prays that they all may be one. They are his disciples, believers past, present, and future, the community of the new covenant. As Episcopalians, in the words of the apostles and the Nicene creeds, we express our trust that all believers are united in one holy Catholic and apostolic church and are bound together in the whole family of God, in the communion of saints. Jesus' prayer for unity has a vertical and a horizontal dimension. The vertical dimension of unity is Jesus' relationship with the Father, which he describes as, you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. He prays, may they, meaning believers, also be in us, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. The Father and the Son are unified in divine love, which they share with us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The horizontal dimension of unity is the new commandment that Jesus gave his disciples at the Last Supper. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Jesus isn't talking about brotherly love. He's talking about agape love, 
selfless love. The agape love the members of the faith community are called to share with one another is the human expression of the divine love shared by Jesus and the Father. We have to remember that Jesus isn't commanding us to make unity. Unity isn't something we can make happen. As Pope Francis has said, above all, unity is a gift. It is a grace to be requested through prayer. Jesus prays to the Father that those who believe that he and the Father are in full communion with one another will become part of that unity. Unity is reflected in how we live as the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul likened the church to the human body, a whole made up of diverse parts. Individually, we have different gifts. Some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip God's people for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We grow in maturity over a lifetime through regular worship, prayer, reading and meditating on God's holy word, and service to others in Jesus' name. Paul urges the faithful in the church at Ephesus to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. In the midst of individuality is the divine gift of unity in Christ. What is the purpose of unity? As Jesus prayed, it is so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. The purpose of our unity is to show the world that Jesus was sent from the Father to manifest the love God has for the world. Jesus prays not only for those who already believe, but also for those who may come to believe because of the witness of the united faith community. Our witness is critical at times like this. At the Last Supper, Jesus knows that the good news comes with pain, the pain of crucifixion, the pain his mother Mary will endure as she stands at the foot of the cross and watches her innocent child die, the pain of persecution his disciples will confront as they witness for him. But we are not crushed under the weight of pain. We are a people of the good news, of the inbreaking of the kingdom of God into this broken world in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. As individuals joining together in this faith community, we have a variety of gifts that we selflessly share to make the kingdom of God, the love of God, known to the world around us in Jesus' name. We are a faith community that has been given the gift of unity amid adversity. We can do this because Jesus is praying for us. Alleluia, alleluia, thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, 
Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Diane, our bishop, and our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, our vestry, our day school, our parish staff, and especially Grace Episcopal Church in Carthage. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joe, our president, our elected representatives, and the courts. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially the people of Ukraine, the families of those who lost their lives in Uvalde, Texas, John Dunn, Ann Ralston, Greg Taylor, Margaret and Richard Ullman, and also Catherine Allberg, the Reverend Barbara Beam, Dodie Brown, Rowan Cartmill, Craig Cartwright, Kathleen Clark, Scott Curry, Ed Dwyer, Alan and Christy Aiken and family, Alex and Susan Green, Dorothy Gregory, Jennifer Brown Harnick, Betty Lockhart Hayes, Phyllis Hook, Jan and Randy, Jim, Ed and Blair Joyner Jr., Charles and Karen Joyner, Michael and Martha Kelly, Glenn and Ruby Lane, Jeannie McDowell, Kathy Morris, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bob Knoll, Gary Oda, Rosemary Overby, Pam, Lawrence Presley, Tom Carley and Theo Roberton, 
John Thompson, Carolyn Watson, Don and Donna White, Bill Winslow, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For those serving in the military and their families, especially Loyal Otterson, Alex Battle, Tanner Bosch, Matthew Carmichael, Gage Dietz, Brendan Frederick, Tom Gildea, Ryan Kelly, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Luciana Laraya, Sean Perone, Samantha and Clint Hubbard, Dan Sanford, and those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, especially Millie Barbacek, Mary Elizabeth Bradley, Colin Carmen, Bernie and Susan Hoff, Judy Holloway, Lori Schwab, Terry and Nancy Roselle. Almighty God, we thank you for gracing our church community with abundant blessings of love, care, and understanding. As we journey through this capital campaign, open our hearts and minds to listen to you and each other to discern your will. Guide our decisions as we move forward to renew and grow our church for your work. All this we ask through you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. Against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.